anyone that was on the fence waiting to see if it breaks out, they get them in long by when it pushes above, and you know what happens? Usually, the rug gets pulled. Hello guys, Master Trader Gareth Soloway reacts to the latest Bitcoin surge, macro data, and various stock market giants. Subscribe now, hit that bell icon, and embark on an enriching journey toward financial success. Let's unlock the potential of these markets together and pave the way for a brighter financial future. Welcome aboard. Bitcoin has reached an all-time high in euro as the latest BTC price breakout gathers speed. Data from Cointelegraph Markets Pro and TradingView confirms that on October 29, BTC slash EUR hit a historic peak of 67,987 euro on Binance. Bitcoin BTC dollar 72,001 nearly re-entered US dollar price discovery this week with a rapid march through final resistance. In Europe, however, the largest cryptocurrency enjoyed an early record thanks to shifts in dollar strength. After almost eight months of consolidation, BTC slash EUR broke through a ceiling set in March. The 350 million citizens of the Eurozone just experienced a new all-time high for Bitcoin. Let's go on to Bitcoin here, guys. And Bitcoin, um, again, you can see all my annotations here on the charts. Uh, let's even remove that one. Just keep it super simple. We talked about a little bit of a retrace and then a move up. And that's exactly what we've seen. Let's go over to the big board and take a look. So in terms of the chart on Bitcoin, the stock is still, I shouldn't say the stock, the crypto is still very, very strong. Now it did tag double top. This is very usual all right, or normal. So you have your double top from March at 74. It kissed 74 right here and it's backed off. Now, in general, and I'm speaking from probabilities, what ends up happening? Well, there are people that are very nervous and saying, okay, it's getting close to double top. We know double tops are resistance, so I'm going to sell just underneath that. And there's a lot of people that do that. They take their profits. They say, okay, it's close enough. Get out, get out, get out, because I don't want to wait for it to hit, and then everyone else sells. And that brings price back down just a little bit. But the kicker is this. Generally, tops are made when the second high, meaning this high, actually pierces. And then essentially the thought process and psychology dictates that you have a lot of stops that are right above that level on from bearish positions, short positions. Those will get run, those will get taken out. And then when it gets above this line, what happens? So many people FOMO in. So they basically wipe out the bears, right, with the pierce, stop them out, then anyone that was on the fence waiting to see if it breaks out, they get them in long by when it pushes above. And you know what happens? Usually the rug gets pulled at that point. All right, now listen, it doesn't mean long term. I'm just talking shorter term trading here. So please understand that. But we saw this in a weird way going back to 2021 in Bitcoin. Remember in 2021 in Bitcoin, you got the move up to 65, the pullback to 30, the move up to 69. Remember when it took out that high of 65, it stopped out the bears, right? All right, that's where the bears got stopped out because they're like, oh crap, it broke the highs, here it goes. And then on the other side, the bulls were like, okay, it broke 65, now it's 100% going to 100,000. And the FOMO just kicked in. And then what happens? They pulled the rug. This happens so many times. These are, by the way, these are institutional secrets, folks. This is stuff that, again, is based on psychology, based on track records of, of scanning charts, thousands and thousands and thousands of data points. This stuff happens. All right. Now, the bigger question is, is it the institutional money that's pulling those tricks? Or is it just human psychology that when it breaks the high, number one, People panic on the short side, they get out, so that's fair. And then on the other side, you get just the, the oh my God, it's breaking out, kind of rush into the trade. So it may not even be an institutional thing. This is just institutional knowledge. Got to understand the knowledge, folks. This will make a huge difference in your trading and investing and really controlling your emotions. And that's what technicals are all about, making decisions based off logic and um, essentially, you know, logic and, and data, data type stuff. All right, by the way, 
One stock that I love on the short side is MSTR, MicroStrategies here. If we look at MicroStrategies pre-market, it is coming down here a little bit. So that's nice to see. But really, the thing I wanted to show you here on MicroStrategy is a beautiful parallel. And listen, you know, people get so upset. Oh, he's against Michael. No, I couldn't care less about Michael Saylor. I'm a trader, right? But look at this, all right, on the chart. When I see it, like, you could call this chart the ABC store or the XYZ store. It doesn't matter. I don't care. I don't care if it's Bitcoin or widgets or they sell turds on the street, frankly, right? I, I couldn't care less. It's trading the chart. And that's the problem that most investors have is they're so focused on, oh, but their technology. Oh, but it's Bitcoin. Oh, but it doesn't matter. Human psychology, it's the same. It's the same whether it's 3D printing or solar stocks when they ran crazy or marijuana stocks when they went nuts or Bitcoin stocks when they go nuts. It's all the same. Humans don't change. We don't change. The question is, can you adjust your mindset to understand that and therefore profit from it? That's the key. So anyways, beautiful little trade. I shorted this yesterday with members of Smart Money Stocks and ETFs. We're already in the money on this micro strategy short. All right, next up, let's go to uh, gold here this morning. Gold trading up just ever so slightly here. Let me bring up my parallel lines. Again, we're just creeping above this little bit of a level here, so we'll see. Um, yesterday, I came to the epiphany that gold is probably going to stay strong until the elections. There's so much fear that there's going to be unrest one way or the other uh, because it's so close and even global instability, right? I mean, you know, they're going to be massive tariffs, so they're going to be this. I mean, there's so many things that people just are piling into gold. What that also tells me is that after the elections, assuming it's not a catastrophe situation, you actually could see a pullback. That might be when we get our pullback on gold. All right, silver real quick, guys. Touching base on silver. Silver's coming in, still underperforming, even after its nice move recently. Oil, which just continues to look like, you know what, to me, um, I still think it goes to 65 before it hits any sort of major support. And then natural gas, guys. Natural gas, again, still no trade for me since our last trade in natural gas. It is pulling back more here. Again, this is my buy level. This up here, I'm not sure if I'd short it because it came so close. But if it does dip here, yeah, I would pick that up at that point in time. Economic news today, guys. ADP private sector jobs numbers coming in at 233,000. That is an amazingly strong number. Okay, so yesterday we had the JOLTS data. JOLTS is job openings. It came in very, very weak, meaning less job openings. But apparently that's because so many people have been hired in the last month. 233,000 beats the 110,000 expectation. So that is a strong number. So again, what that tells us is that even though the JOLTS number was weak, it doesn't tell us that the overall economy is weakening substantially yet. Granted, we do have the non-farm payrolls number on Friday, and of course, I'll analyze that once we have the game plan on Friday morning. The other number that came in, this was a little weaker than expected, was GDP. Q3 GDP coming in at 2.8% versus 3% expected. But let's be fair, 2.8% is still very solid growth for the U.S. economy. All right, so when all is said and done, we're seeing kind of a mixed bag reaction here in the markets. Again, you can see, again, this is where we closed yesterday right here. All right, and this is what we were doing in the overnight, overnight kind of floating up. And then as we came into some of this economic data and morning earnings data, we started to see a little bit of a fade. But if you draw a trend line right across, we're essentially flat on the S&P 500. Now, don't forget, guys, so we got through the Alphabet earnings, the AMD earnings, but after the close today, we have Microsoft and Meta reporting amongst many other big names. And tomorrow, we also have jobless claims, more earnings from Apple and Amazon after the close, and Friday, the non-farm payrolls report. So this is a huge, huge next 24 to 48 hours for the markets. Now, I wanted to show you this. This is something that, again, I want to draw your attention to. It's very, very important. The markets have been getting nervous as rates have been going up, up, and up. And remember, the Federal Reserve cut rates by 50 basis points about a month and a half ago. But what did rates do? They went straight up instead of down. Now, again, what does that tell us? It tells us that when all is said and done, the Fed can try to guide rates 
but they can't totally control rates. And that's very important to note. Really, if you think about who's ultimately the end game controller of interest rates here in the US, it's those people that are buying the US debt. Because if they say, hey, we're not gonna buy your debt because we don't think we're gonna get ever paid back on this debt unless you pay us 10% interest, guess where the interest rates would go? They'd go to 10%. All right, so the point being here though, on a technical analysis basis, and you know that verified investing is all about the data, there's no hype, there's no nonsense, it is what it is. What we know is the yields had broken down from this bigger wedge pattern, and then we've seen a classic retrace to the scene of the crime right here, going right back to that level. You put in a little topping tail yesterday. That's a reversal signal per technical analysis. Today, we're basically flat on rates, but my expectation now is for rates to start coming down. Now, is it going to come down because all of a sudden we're going to get our debt under control and we're going to all of a sudden be really fiscally responsible? Not even close, guys. The reason it's going to come down, in my humble opinion, is because the economic data will, again, get weaker and weaker, which will draw it down just by the nature of it. Now, even if we go into a recession, will rates ever go back to, let's say, 2% or 1%? The answer is no, because the U.S. debt is way too high. There's no country that's going to loan us money at 2% at interest rates. They're going to want higher rates because, again, our fiscal situation is getting worse and worse in the U.S. Okay, so that's where we are. And just a heads up, I did short or I did go long TLT. TLT, remember, TLT is the symbol on this ETF that basically is used to trade the yields, right? So when yields go down, like I'm expecting them to, the TLT should go up. It's kind of an inverse play that way. And that again, I did pick up with members of Smart Money Stocks and ETFs yesterday. All right, over here we go. Let's take a look at a couple other things here this morning. Just going back to the S&P 500, if we take a look here, this is your daily chart of the S&P. There hasn't been a lot that has changed as they walk back to the big screen here, is that for the most part, we're still hovering below this wedge pattern. And remember, as long as we're below the wedge pattern, the vulnerability remains that we could dip into this trend line, although that would then become major support. You would expect a pretty solid move back up off of that level. But again, the wedge pattern's been broken. The idea is a retrace to the former breakout major pivot high level. And again, at that point, we'll have to watch and see, do we get the big move up to 6,000 on the S&P 6100, or does it bounce a little bit and then roll over Thank you for watching the interview highlights of Gareth Soloway. If you enjoy this highlight video, please kindly subscribe and help share this video for us to share more of this valuable content. Thank you.